Well, hello, everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Well, here we are. It's Holy Week. It's Wednesday. It's the day before the betrayal of Jesus on what we call Holy Thursday night. At the Last Supper, Jesus would institute the Eucharist. And he would say to us, do this in memory of me. And, and it's a, just an enormously impactful week for all of history and for all of time and for all, and for all of us, all of humankind. Well, this week we have in a particular way been looking at the things that happened at the Last Supper. There's so much that has occurred. Jesus comes in, he gives them an example of servanthood. He gets down and he washes their feet. He also washes their feet, scholars and academics tell us, as a symbol, as, as symbolism of entering into the new kingdom. He tells them to do this to each other, to bring others into this new kingdom, to serve others. He then gets angry and the word is troubled, which means he becomes angry, indignant about the whole betrayal. And he tells Judas to go and do what he has to do. He then says to love each other as he has loved them. And then he says to them, he, he says to them, well, I'm in the Father and the Father's in me. And that becomes a concept that sometimes is a little hard to get your head around. And he says, I'm going to the Father. I'm going, I'm going to prepare a place. I'm going to the Father. Now, we know that God is all consuming. And so everywhere is with God. And so he says, I'm going to the Father and, and the, that place where you will experience intimacy. And I'm preparing a place for you. Uh, and in the scriptures, what we see is, is, and particularly in John, there are many images used to describe a deeper reality. And if we're not careful, sometimes we get stuck on the images rather than the reality behind them, which takes prayer and, and reflection to find. Jesus says to them, you know, that, you know, I'm the way. Now, when I was younger, I used to think that the way, uh, you know, the road is narrow, that the, all those sorts of scriptures, I used to think there's actually a path you've got to follow. And what Jesus comes along and he goes, listen, hear me, hear me. The path is me. I am the way. And so, and so as we become consumed into who Jesus is and we begin to live our life according to Jesus's way, we are living the way. And where does the way? The way leads us to the Father. The way leads us to heaven. And, and so all of this beautiful imagery is here. And then right in the middle of this supper, when all of these things are going on, Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit and that he won't leave them alone. And at that point in time, I wonder if they fully understood what he was saying. Have a look at this in verse 15 of chapter 14. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And when I left home many years ago, I remember my dad giving me some very final advice as I was leaving home to go live somewhere else. And, and it was like a goodbye talk. He took me aside and he had a chat with me. And here's Jesus that only he knows in just a few hours time, a little while, he's about to be betrayed. And within a few hours, they will put him to death. And, and things will be different from then on. And there's a great heaviness and sadness you can sense among the apostles. They're confused. Why can't we come? Why does this have to happen? And he, begin, and he gives this, this talk to them to calm them down. And he says this, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I'll ask the Father, and he'll give you another advocate, a helper, to be with you forever. Right. So he says to them, if you keep my commandments, you're going to be OK. And I'm going to send you a helper, a helper to be with you. You won't be alone. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You will know, know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. Jesus says, you who believe because of the way you live, in keeping the teaching that I have done, another, another advocate will come. The Holy Spirit will come to you and will guide and lead you and give you comfort. You won't be alone. In verse 18, it says, I will not leave you orphaned. 
I'm coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me because he won't be there. But you'll see me because I live and you will also live. That I won't be there because people won't believe in me, but you'll know I'm there even if you don't see me. You and I, many of us who are listening today, we believe even though we do not see. There were those who believed because he was right there and then. They could see him, touch him. But he says to them, you'll believe. The world will stop and go, it's not true, can't, doesn't make any sense. But you, to you it will make sense because you'll know it in your heart again. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I'll not leave you orphaned, I'm coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live in you also. On that day you will know that I'm in my Father and you in me and I in you. What does the Catechism tell us? The Catechism tells us that the, God made us to share in his blessed life, to be in his life, to be in him. Right? Uh, they, they who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me and those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. He, what he says to them is, do what I'm asking you to do and we will be with you. Jesus, Jesus, Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered, those who love me will keep my word and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. What Jesus is saying is, those who surrender the, their lives to me and to my will and to my way, we will come and live in them. Jesus is saying, yes, I'm going. Yes, I'm going. But you will not be alone. The Holy Spirit's going to come to you. And as you keep the commandments, as you keep the living according to this revelation of me that's the way in you, the Father will come, we will come, and we will reside in you. And you will know what someone who hasn't opened their life to God will not be able to know. I mean, imagine the apostles as they hear these words. It, it, it would have given them comfort in the midst of confusion. It would have given them a sense of peace in the sense of panic. Jesus is saying, I'm with you. And then it goes on and it says, verse 25, I have said these things to you while I'm still with you. He's leaving only in a matter of hours. But the advocate, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. The Holy Spirit's going to come, is going to be with you consistently. And is going to teach you and remind you, teach you new things, but remind you what I said. See, if we, we need to see the story in the context of the setting. And the setting John puts it in is right here, only moments before Jesus is betrayed and taken away. He's saying, don't panic. I'm with you. And if you keep my commandments, you live the way I've called you. If you live in me, if you live the way... We will come and make our home with you and we will be in you. Now we can understand that at an intellectual level, but the truth and the power of it is to understand it here within our heart. And so tomorrow as we come into Holy Thursday and to the great events of what will be this time, uh, pray, Holy Spirit, reveal to me the love of the Father, the love of the Son in my heart. May I be still in your presence in these days and encounter you deeply in these days. I, I desire to follow you with all that I am. And Lord God, I know that you will reside in me. Father, I pray that you would hear this prayer in Jesus' name through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. See you tomorrow, Holy Thursday. And don't forget wherever you are, God's never ever far from you.